Hello, Internet, and welcome to Tissues of the Day, episode 21, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. We're taking a whole new angle to you out there in the web. Rather than being three screens, we're going to be two and what, a half, David? Two, two and a half? Yeah, because I guess I'll be... Wait, no, it's just two screens. <laughs> just two screens? Okay. okay one yeah. and a half, one and a half. I have... I never did well in math. Uh, I am joined uh, today by my lovely host, David Borja, and we're also joined by... Olivia, darling, what's up? Yes, that is right. Today's episode is about new beginnings, brand new starts, fresh turns of the leaf, blank canvas, you name it. And Olivia Darling is our lovely, lovely guest who is joining us and who is joining me in person, uh, which is uh, a first. So we actually have yeah. somebody who is be able to join us. Robert's um, got a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Giggle tee. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, we actually know all each other through improv and through being in a comedy troupe together. Yeah, that was Memories. how many years now? We said, what, five, six? Uh, we met each other yeah, five, five years, years ago. Yeah. Because yeah. it's coming up to my fifth wedding anniversary, and I met my husband a month before I met you guys. Which mm. I still find crazy, because I don't know about you, David, but I remember us meeting, like, I don't know, I remember us meeting and then meeting Tom, like Tom came later. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little while till we met Tom. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, five years ago. God bless you for being my friend at that time, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was so like strung out all the time. Were you? Not on drugs, I just but just were... like. <laughs> I was going to say, he's like, he was just really high all the time. <laughs> yeah. I just remember you being a joy. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is that the worst version? <laughs> Fuck! I was definitely, I was definitely tense. I was having some relationship woes at the were, time. Were you fairly new to Vancouver at that time? Uh, uh, yes and no. Like I'd been, I moved to Vancouver, um, November twenty thirteen. So it would have been oh, so just at years. like the two year mark two or years. so. Oh, okay, okay. So a couple of years in. Yeah, no, that makes sense. If you're brand new and everything, and like, yeah, 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 and like encountering a bunch of weirdos and improv that. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. Well, that's what saved me. Like, not to totally divert, but that's kind of a new chapter when I started living in Vancouver. And then um, for the first year, I was like, I guess I'll just start dating. And like, it wasn't super fun. And I didn't have a support system. And I found a support mm -hmm. system through improv. Mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. We found community through that. <laughs> Right. Uh, and uh, speaking of community, we're going to have a little community competition against you. A community of two. David and I are going to do some rapid fire questions against you. Oh. Yeah. You, against you ready for that? <laughs> against I you. Think yeah, like, just, this is I think a we're just giving Olivia a question. Of, I weird. didn't think that we were choosing violence today. <laughs> yes. yeah. So yeah. rapid fire. That's, that's great. My words are going to come in the form of bullets and you're mm. going to have to deflect them. <laughs> I'm not Neo. We've had this discussion. Yeah. I've seen you move just as slowly. <laughs> I was hungover. Yeah, you know, she also did enter the Matrix at one point and taken several red pills and blue pills. Let's just say my neck port is bigger than your neck port. <laughs> oh, Aww. we had a neck port. Uh, you ready for some rapid fire, David? Sure am. Okay, so how this works is we're going to go back and forth between the two of us, round robin style, okay. and we're going to have a quick rapid fire question that we ask you. You just answer as quickly as possible. Don't judge yourself. Okay. Just give an answer that makes sense. Okay. Uh, and then we'll include it at some point as we deem fit. Okay. Yeah. All right. David, you ready for that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, what's your middle name? Blythe. Mm oof. B-L-Y-T-H-E. Mm-hmm. Got it. What do you wish you could do more of? Art. Pie or cake? Oh, cake. Mm -hmm. Country or city? City. Uh, what's the last time you felt flattered? Yesterday. Mm. Nights in or nights out? Contextually both. A current turn on? Uh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. Country or city? City again. Oh, damn it. Did you even ask that one? <laughs> I've never done that before. Uh, oh, man. Uh, driver Shoes. or passenger? Oh, passenger. I can't drive. <laughs> I wouldn't trust me to drive either. A current addiction? Cheese. Mm. Drama or comedy? Comedy. But 
also contextually drama. It really depends. A partner to be shorter or taller? Taller. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could do over any part of the day, which would it be? Ooh, probably the bit where I was late to this podcast. <laughs> uh, describe your aesthetic in one word. My cynic? A aesthetic. My aesthetic. Uh, for the past year, it's been comfy core. And in regular normal times, uh, what fits? Comfy core. I love that. Okay. If smartphones disappeared tomorrow, would you be okay? Eventually. <laughs> the most recent thing you've been reading, like a book, something reading a lot of recently. Uh, read it a lot of, but the book would be something borrowed by Emily Given, mm -hmm. which I am rereading. Uh, what do you have no patience for? Slow walkers. Uh -huh. It really gets me. Just move to just move to the side. <laughs> if you were a spirit animal, what would you be? Probably the Luga. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and David, last one. Uh, what's the last autograph you've gotten? If you have. Oh man. Ah. Oh. Was it too long ago? I mean, time is a void, so yeah, it was a long time ago, but shit. Okay, whose autograph would you ask for? Conan O'Brien. If could. Conan Ooh, no nice Coco. One. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, well, what I'm going to do with this is because we know Olivia so well, is like, what have you learned new about Olivia through that, David, that you didn't know before? About Olivia. <sighs> um, I'm getting a sense of flexibility a sense of you know being in touch with uh what you need what you want on a given day i learned that you passed on the a turn on question and i totally <laughs> thought it was going to be something like obscure like scones <laughs> scones with clotted cream well i mean scones with clotted cream are absolutely delicious <laughs> <laughs> but like when you say turn on, are you talking about like a sexual turn on? Or are you oh, talking yeah. about yeah, like yeah. an empathetic <laughs> turn on? Are you talking about like basically out of context, that question is difficult to answer. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, it could be. It could be anywhere from like, yeah, like sexual to like just like a thing that gets you going right now that you're like, I'm all into blank. Oh, yeah, yeah nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I, w I was going to go with like stylish hoop earrings, which she's currently porting. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Amazing. So we're going to enter a segment, Dose, where we're going to talk about our topic, which is all about things we've all been experiencing over the last few years, which <laughs> is new beginnings. So. I, I formulated these questions hoping to kind of show both sides of the new beginning, sort of the things that like you learn from it, things you didn't expect you learn from it, and also just kind of like maybe the fears you went in with it, but didn't like that either came or did not come to fruition. So the first question is to kick us off is what was one of the biggest lessons you learned about yourself through starting a new beginning? And I'm going to throw it first to David. Uh, for me, it was basically forcing me to confront my expectations, like expectations about myself and expectations about other people. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're thrown into a new context, like, yeah, you both have uh, like some things that you want out of this experience, but also like things that I want to like hold myself accountable for. And so both of those things are like, they're much more obvious once I'm thrown into a new situation so i've moved twice in the past like year or so um and yeah in both of those situations i was just like whoa like this was not what i was expecting usually and then having to like recalibrate but also get back in touch with what the thing was that i was expecting in the first place right mm -hmm. both from other people and from myself mm. and <laughs> it's gonna sound weird did, did it end up showing that your expectations need to be higher or lower or different um yeah it's just a mix of all of those <laughs> because yeah. like i think in a lot of ways i just need to lower my expectations mm. a lot of the time um 
because having them too high sets me up for disappointment. And at the same time, like there are just like bare minimum needs in my life that if I'm not like, yeah, if I'm not fulfilling those needs, I just will be upset and I will be like, you know, running at a deficit. So yeah, yeah just, and I'll talk more about this uh, a little later, but um, yeah. Yeah, and just knowing needs are like really, really important. So you're like, kind of like, it's like, I need to be comfortable in my home. Uh, yeah. I also need to have water, running water, <laughs> minimum yeah. need. <laughs> it's like, yeah. so yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, so and there's definitely more like emotional needs, but like I, yeah. said, I have notes about it for a different question. Okay, okay, good. Uh, Olivia, what was it like? You started a very new beginning that I am now sharing and kind of moving to another country. Uh, now that can be the source of it, but any any beginning from the biggest lessons you learned about yourself? Uh, I guess learning that a lot of relationships were situational because I went mm. from living in the same place for my entire life and having a very strong social network and always having something to do and always having somewhere to be. So removing myself from that was devastating actually for the first few months Mm. because it was dealing with loneliness. It was dealing with having to make new friends in my late twenties and you haven't really made new friends or I hadn't like since university. It was like, I don't need to do this. Like aside from improv, like that was sort of like the only friendship making that I had done like, First, from being a little girl, then in high school, then university. And usually that's when people stop. You're done. You don't <laughs> have to talk and to there. new people. And, there. and it's great. Oh. And so really just like throwing myself into like learning what it was like to be lonely as an adult. Yeah. And how to form a new social network. That was really difficult. Yeah. And it sounds like all of those were tied to a community aspect, right? Like it was either a community coming out of uh, improv, out of maybe like high school or college years. Yeah. Summer um, camp yeah. or like a job that I had. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then when trying to like establish those communities newly as an adult, it's very different. It's because like a lot of the time they're handed to you or they're yeah. in part with that period of your life. But then when you have to formulate it on your own, it is. It's a whole other challenge. Yeah. Um, for myself, it's I I kind of learned about how it's it's like how much change was needed for me, like how how like important was to me that came in a lot of different ways that I do need variety and change um, because it was just like little things, even when I first flew so like the inspiration i'm using right now is kind of like starting my new journey and my new chapter just like flying and being a different place even though i wasn't like i was doing pretty much the same thing i was doing at home it, you know still dealing with covid still you know like dealing with all the practices around that but it was just like being in a new location alone was just like oh this provided some variety that i needed and yeah. how like important that is to me and how i need to find it in a lot of different ways in life be it in the job uh, in friends in setting whatever it may be but just like variety and how how much that matters i think that's fair yeah variety is the spice of life right it's also it's kind of cool that we're all sort of like at three different stages of journeys right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm fairly comfortable with like my new beginning and my new beginning is like five years old. And David, yours is sort of like an interchangeable, like a year to two years, new beginning. And yours is like literally brand new. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Just kind of like seeing the interplay between like the three different timelines of where we're at. And David, you also have a bit of a unique one too, because your new beginnings, you've literally jumped on both sides of them multiple times. Right uh yeah how do you mean like in the sense of like new beginning with kind of coming to a new city then going back to family and then returning to a new city and it's sort of like and you've gone back to the family scenario in a couple times right so like did anything uniquely come out of that it's almost like revisiting new beginnings it's almost and i'm sure each one was a new beginning unto itself but just having that chance to kind of like flip both sides of the coin yeah for sure because you know, even like starting as a student again has been an interesting experience. And definitely the first, the first couple classes were much less stressful than these last couple classes. I don't think I've talked about this, 
on the podcast, but I've mentioned it to Robert of just like, I had a sense starting the classes that I would um, know quite a bit of the material, like as we were going over it, which is fine. It just means the classes are easier, but you know, you don't want to like discount the whole experience. Um, but it proved to be quite true. Like there wasn't a ton of new material in the classes. And then in, in this last semester, I had to do a beginner class that had to get pushed like late in my school year. I was just like, yeah, it's the class that I'm having right after this podcast, actually. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, well, just got to hunker down and get her done. <laughs> uh, cool. And as far as the family stuff, there was definitely a feeling of, wait, but I'm an adult. Why do mm. I have to like start over with these people? But that's kind of what my experience was. It was like there were so many things that I was learning and changing about myself since living on my own in the city that moving back in with family brought into really sharp relief, like how much I had changed since I last lived with them. Um, and that was its own challenge. Cause I was just like, Oh, okay. Well, there are a lot of needs that I don't get met by family, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm and, and intrigued on the educational side of things, especially because that's yeah. a question you even tie to lessons is that even when revisiting something that might seem familiar, what's kind of like the minimum takeaway and you're not even done the class, but what do you think will probably be that takeaway from the course this time around that you probably didn't get before? So, uh, so you're talking about the course that's very familiar. That's not yeah. covering a lot of new material. Yeah. Um, oh, a, a takeaway. Okay. So are we talking about like meta takeaway or are we talking about just like camera operations? Oh, no, no, no. It, like it could be practical. <laughs> that's a thing. Loma, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a newfound interest in things that are new. Um, uh, mm -hmm. it, it could be a, like an applicable skill thing, but it could also just be like yeah. what what is I'm learning about myself or my needs or something that comes out of an experience like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the major thing is that uh, something I've tried to do since the beginning of just ask whatever I want <laughs> from the teacher. <laughs> like it really, uh, I mean, related to the class, but just like, I'm here to learn. So I am going to ask like stuff that is quote unquote more advanced for this class. But like I paid for this, so I'm not just going to like sit here, be quiet and not participate. That was a major lesson for me and definitely helps. Uh, it's a good life skill, right? To just be like, okay, well, I want to get something out of this. So how do I get something out of this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I find you ultimately, otherwise you get so frustrated with a, that course or that experience if you don't. And you really yeah. do take take nothing away unless you find something. Right. Yeah. Do you ever have one of those situations, Olivia, where it was sort of like you were taking maybe a course, you're like, oh, this is going to be a, you know, a skate through or you had to do something you didn't necessarily want to do because you're like, I don't have to. And like you, st but you still walked away being like, I learned something. I think just like going through job interview processes where a lot of my jobs have been sort of like, I know somebody who knows somebody mm -hmm. and they're just like looking for somebody. So I'll slide on in. Um, but when I was going through like a formal interview process, it was just like, Oh God, I need to like answer questions about myself and like <laughs> do all this stuff. But kind of like doing a few different interviews it kind of just taught me that like oh yeah no i actually do know what i'm worth and like what i can bring to a company so it was kind of like uplifting that way it was what i thought was going to be a very negative experience of just like okay like where do you see yourself in five years if you had to name a biggest <laughs> strength would you say that you work too hard or not enough <laughs> um but yeah a lot of That's the interview process just like kind yeah. of Kind of like when what David is doing, where he's like asking what he wants. There was an interview I knew I wasn't gonna get it, so I was just like, I was just bullshitting like halfway through. I'm just like, I feel like the synergistic team mindset that I could bring to this oh, no. small council um, <laughs> would really not only uplift but upbring the level of work. I'm <laughs> just gonna get it. So buzzworded just, as I much as possible. Exactly. Okay. I was like a buzzword fucking yeah. or a Buzzfeed salad. I was like all the answers <laughs> off of every quiz you've taken for the past two years. Yeah. Okay. I am that type of pizza. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the full meal. I deal. say I am a bit of a what do you call Belle from uh, Disney and the Beast. <laughs> 
<laughs> Excuse me? Is that because you've got brown hair and you're wearing yellow right now, yeah. David? Is that what yeah. that came up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when Great you, observation. You're even wear, you've even got blue, the color of the prints. Yeah. When you ask Look me at. about my work <gasps> ethic, I would like to compare myself to a tree. I'm strong <laughs> like an oak, but I am prickly like a pine. Yeah, so you have the thick because of your height. Uh, I saw you more like a, you know, a birch because you're always shedding your skin, <laughs> just it's flaking shit. everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> and it never grows back. No. Oh god, she's she's a just skinny bone. How would you describe your friend Olivia? She's like a shedding tree. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where you're just like you just have fun with the interview because you know it's going downhill. Yeah. Uh, this transitions me, I don't know how, but it does, into the question around what was unfounded in terms of your fears and unexpected fear that actually came of a new chapter. So mm -hmm. there were probably the things that you're like, going into it, I'm afraid of this. And yeah. it ended up being unfounded. But there was probably something new, something that did freak you out, something you did not expect. What was something like that? I'll start with Olivia. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's giving me a lot of time to think. Yeah. I'm really glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. I'm going to give you a moment because Thanks. for yeah. me... I can go if you want. Yeah. I have a note. Yeah, oh, go, go ahead, David. No, okay. No. Uh, my unfounded fear is probably loneliness, maybe jumping off a little bit of what Olivia was saying. Um, I do feel blessed that I have come back to Vancouver where I have a bit of community. Um, but like... Yeah, I've just had to get creative about the ways to maintain connection with other people because it's still COVID and like rules change about who to hang out with, whether to do it outside, etc. Then my unexpected fear that uh, did kind of come true uh, was money. Good old money. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not famous for my skill with money, but I am also a student. I'm not employed <laughs> right now, so I'm being quite easy on myself. Um for yeah, just needing to like spend money. It's literally been an affirmation of mine to like uh, forgive myself for needing and spending money because like it doesn't really help to like be hard on myself because that will like put me in like an uneasy mindset and then being in an uneasy mindset makes me emotional and I'm a bit of an emotional spender. So that becomes a bit of a vicious cycle. Like financial um, spender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, usually it's food. Like food is like my biggest expense, um, which is wild because I'm so skinny. It feels weird to say like, you know, I just love spending money on food. Da but like David is a it, walking it poster is. boy for like gluten free <laughs> and not eats consuming carbs. Yeah. They're like, you want to be thin. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but yeah, it really is wild. And a lot of that is like city life. Like just food seems to be very expensive in the city. Yeah. Um, but some of that is just like planning ability and like you know, willpower. Like I don't like <laughs> admitting that I have like low willpower about that stuff, but yeah. Yeah. So those are mine. Do you okay. just find like the most expensive heirloom tomato that you can? Is that like what you splurge on? Do you find like No, it's usually bubble tea. <laughs> it's usually bubble tea and subway sandwiches. They're a little bit overpriced. <laughs> we, David and I did a lot of bubble teas, even like for the short period that we overlapped, like it was pretty yeah. consistent in our get togethers. It's, which is just lovely. But I love having a sort of like a consistent snack and that's that's just how I want to live my life. Also, very quick, uh, Subway mm. was recently in the news over here because Ireland declared that their bread could not be declared bread because it has <laughs> yeah. like too yeah. high of a sugar content. Yeah, it was that so, high that it was considered think, oh. cake. I think they considered yeah. it a cake. That's like, all right, it's Subway. Damn. So do you want to have a uh, <laughs> a meatball marinara pastry? <laughs> I want to get the Parmesan cake stuffed with chicken teriyaki yeah. glaze. I love ham and cheesecake. Oh, God. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, I feel like my unexpected but also unfounded fear were one and the same, which is interesting because like I had a lot of fear about leaving my comfort zone and shedding a lot of what I knew, right? Yeah. Going from home, packing up a lot of what I had, leaving a lot of the things I had behind both like possessions and people uh, and being like, oh, I'm, I'm going, you know, like, um, I, I, I'm going to freak out because like I'm going to lose a lot of that consistency, that structure and that familiarity and all that. But yeah. then when you do it, you're like, wow, I'm so light. 
and wow, I like suddenly uh, everything becomes possible. And and like it's like a bit of like a purge, you know, that isn't just about possessions where you're like, I have like this um, blank canvas to work with. And that's kind of inspiring. But that also then became an unexpected fear because like, oh, I have a blank canvas to work with. Yeah. And it's like that artist with a set of paints where you're like, where do I start? Like, what's what's most important? What's the priority about, like, redefining and repainting a new picture? Yeah. Um, which we have to do a whole new segment on because, by the way, David, Olivia has been hiding the fact that she's an extremely good painter and I've been seeing it all throughout the house. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, she's, she's really good at it. But, yeah, so it was it, it felt a bit one in the same, which was weird because it's almost like I cleared myself of a lot of things, but I'm also intimidated by how much I now have to fill in. Yeah, I don't know if you remember Robert, but I um I think I've told you me I've taken a term from my therapist called wonderment, uh where she goes, wonderment is exactly that mix you're talking about. Wonderment is like uncertainty, but it is also like the joy of discovery. Mm -hmm. Um so there yeah. You go. yeah 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 cool. mixed emotions right that's be that shows that we're evolved and mature <laughs> beings because we can have mixed emotions about things did you just yeah. call me mature <laughs> like aged oh wow <laughs> <laughs> so was there anything for you in particular that like was you didn't expect to be a fear or maybe it was totally like oh i was freaked up out of this and then it wasn't a fear uh, at all it was actually a stereotypical fear based off of uh media stereotypes of british mm -hmm. people um, and that is that they are incredibly closed off and tied up lip and do not talk about emotions. And it is literally like, you know, very cold, like the country, mm. but not really because we're in a heat wave right now. And that was an unfounded fear because mm. I was working at a pub and just talking to people and people were very reciprocal that way. Mm. So that's actually been a joy to find out. Yeah. Yeah. And you were also sitting at like the social center of like English community and that of like the pub, right? Where everyone yeah. comes and goes. Pubs should be called community centers yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like bring That's your family, awesome. get plastered. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have to yell at parents. Me just like, I'm not a babysitter here, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Lamaze class is in one hour, so sober up. <laughs> exactly. You put that GT down youngest? and start to clench. <laughs> What's the minimum drinking age 18. in London? So it's 18 okay. if you are drinking alone or in a group. However, you can have a glass of beer, wine, or cider if you are 16 and it is bought for you and drunk in front of a parent or legal guardian at the mm. But a full dinner must be had. Oh, yeah. yeah. So full sausage. Yeah. There's a in-betweeners <laughs> episode where they... Robert, we are not talking about 16-year-olds eating sausages and getting drunk. <laughs> I'm talking about a normal banger, maybe with mash and a beer. <laughs> God, that just sounded worse. Sausages I mean, and bangers, Robert. <laughs> he handed you a ladder and you just kept digging. <laughs> <laughs> dig up, Robert, dig up. Uh, oh, okay, boy. what about an unexpected fear? Something that was like, oh God, I didn't know I was going to face this. Um, yeah, did something come true? Uh, I mean, I didn't expect to be lonely when I moved here. But we've already oh, kind of wow, yeah. talked about that. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. No. Um, but I do really want to jump on your blank canvas analogy really quickly. Mm. Because when you were back home, you had this beautiful canvas with its own background. The yeah. subject matter was defined. Mm. There were lines. You were painting different lines. Mm. But now this is the next in a series, brah. Is it going to be the same background? Is it going to be different? What are you going to paint? With acrylics. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what metaphor that makes it, but it's going to be permanent and it's going to be colorful. It's cheap and water based. Yeah. Congratulations. Welcome to England. <laughs> cheap and water based. Oh, and Get that, ready to be soggy. That reminds me of like we've had many discussions about the River Thames out here because supposedly the River Thames has trace amounts of like cocaine in it. Yeah. And so there's been lots of jokes about like drinking the water Thames <laughs> and like how it impacts yeah. you. Mm. I was mm. awake for days. Yeah, just just yeah. from one glass of Thames. <laughs> Glugging down that Thames water. <laughs> right? All right, final question. Okay. What advice would you give to someone else, maybe even like your younger self, uh, looking to start a new beginning? David. Oh, 
Uh, it's like it's a it's a multi-parter, <laughs> um, <laughs> as I am want to do. So the first part is you got to get in touch with your needs. Like really, really sit down and ask yourself, what do I need? When am I happiest? Um, and it can be physical, like basic needs. Uh, I don't think we've talked about this, but like Abraham Maslow has he is famous for creating the hierarchy of needs. Um, which you know has like I had your physical no idea stuff, his your first name was stuff. Abraham. I just always yeah, knew it yeah, as yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah, <laughs> okay. He had many sons and many ideas about needs. <laughs> okay. um, I don't know if that's was true. He might not sons? have had many sons. Was it seven? Yeah. Seven sons? <laughs> um, but yeah, it covers physical needs, social needs, more emotional needs, and then like spiritual needs uh, in that hierarchy. Uh, and it's very, very useful to think about. Um, and like what resonates the most with you and like what feels like an area that might not be fulfilled. Mm. Then the other part is knowing your nouns and your verbs. So what I mean by that is obviously small grammar lesson. Nouns are people, places, and things. Oh. Verbs are actions. So, much <laughs> so like petting. when we think about, yeah, like exactly. Pet. Like petting a pet. Ah. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> Bravo. I think I just got compared uh, to a pet. <laughs> so uh so when we think about the future when we think about happiness um this is something i've thought about a lot of like i think typically we can think about nouns as like the people were around the places that we are the things that we have um maybe the goals like what is a material goal that we're striving for um and those are great in one sense because they're very concrete um but they are still quite ephemeral like just having a nice thing doesn't make us happy for like a long period of time we're usually like we anticipate the anticipation is exciting we're excited to get the thing um and then the next day or a couple days later we are basically back at our baseline mm. then verbs on the other hand are activity and like process oriented and they're about measuring your effort as opposed to measuring the result so like your verbs you know, can be tied to these objects or like to these tools or to these people. What do you do with these people? Are you talking with them? Are you drinking with them? Are you playing a game? Like, what is it? What is the activity? <laughs> Similar like with work or with hobbies and like any of that stuff. Um, you know, in like cognitive behavioral therapy, we talk about how uh, like our mind drives our behavior, mm -hmm. but our behavior also drives our mind so like we can do certain activities that then change like the neural pathways of like what we might have yeah, been used to yeah. and thinking about our activity in terms of like what makes us happy and what fills us up um tends to work out well in my experience and that is just my opinion <laughs> i'm not an expert <laughs> are you a therapist <laughs> <laughs> are you freud is there a lot of penis theory in your therapy <laughs> Am I getting um, bills for this? You know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, the amount of penis theory I have in my therapy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, that is quite brilliant, David, because it, it, when you were describing it, I was like, this is super complicated. But it's actually quite simple when you think about it. Like, um, It's almost it like when you think about those two major factors of either the things or the actions you want to have. And, and I think yeah. you're tying this to a new beginning or something, like the things of importance yep. that you want to have a associated to that new beginning it, it could very well be that like for example like starting into improv i was just like i one of the big reasons i started back into it is like i wanted to learn how to fail so the thing that was important to me at that moment that action is like i wanted more failure oh. um and and the community aspect was just like a bonus that came later but the reason i kind of went into it is because like i wasn't failing well in life and i wanted to learn how to fail again in conjunction with i was like oh i realize things art is important i need to have it in my life and i wasn't doing it but um that that was kind of like the two major things that brought me into a world that is actually opened up to you know these yeah. people i have in the room and just to follow up on that robert like what would you say are some helpful reminders for failing well or failing gracefully um that the second point of that you can fail gracefully you know you can still fail and and make it enjoyable or make it um at least from the perspective of an audience like not feel so like horrendous and uncomfortable but you can also do it for yourself right like you can also like like this thing is not going to end pretty but i'm going to take what i can from it and make it end as pretty as i can for my own purposes in life i think also that um 
you know, whatever failure. Uh, and so this is the second item is failure is a bit of a perspective thing, right? Yeah. It's like what one person might consider failure. Another might consider an opportunity. And then also, I think that it's like, you know, if you predict the failure, you're not willing to kind of dive in as much. You're going to like, you're going to kind of maybe tiptoe in. You're not going to jump. You're not going to leap. You're, you're not expecting that net to appear, mm -hmm. but more often than not, you can recover from it. And so it's just like, if we have that fear of failure right off the bat, we're probably going to be more hesitant in what we do as opposed to really properly enjoying it, regardless of what the end result is. That'd be a few yeah. lessons. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, uh, some of that does tie into like, what I was talking about of like the effort versus the result, because if you're measuring like I did my best, I'm pretty sure I put all my effort into that. So whatever happens, happens like, you know, that you did your best. Well, like the result is wanting that specific outcome, which you can't necessarily control. Yeah. Um, and sets people up for disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, Olivia, any advice for the young at heart? I mean, I kind of just wish that you guys said that to me like five years ago. Like, oh, God, that. yeah, that right? Really helpful. Yeah. If, uh, you know, yeah. time machine style. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just more like fear is natural, but you kind of just have to drive through that terrifying haunted forest before you get out of that terrifying haunted forest. Mm. Hmm. Like, Have you all heard the going. acronym? What? Have Ooh. you heard the fear acronym? No. It is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. I'm getting billed for this, aren't I? I don't have money, Robert. <laughs> yeah, he. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the penis stuff. So. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, the I mean, gonna get you know, that's what I was fixated on. <laughs> Robert, Robert is covering the podcast hosting lately, so yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that exactly. is generous enough. <laughs> Can you expand on that? So, like, what's the? Is it almost to say like? to go through the scary, like to realize what the real fear is. You got to go through the scary forest kind of thing. Like you've got to experience the fear to realize the fear. Uh, it's to get to your end point. You're going to have to go through the thing that scares you. Yeah. So for me yeah. going through loneliness, not having a safety net, not having a social network was slightly debilitating at first, Yeah. but then I had to start making it happen. Otherwise it never would have happened. I never would have been able to get out of that terrifying haunted forest unless I went through that terrifying haunted forest. Mm, In this analogy, yes. the haunted forest is the only path forward. The way yes. behind me, I don't know, zombies, fire? I don't know. <laughs> it's too large to go around. You gotta go through it. Can't go over it. Yes. Can't go under it. Can't go around it. Gotta, gotta go, go through, through it. it. Yeah. 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 I, I in fact I think my advice is a bit similar in that it's I would it's it, it's kind of the retrospective of that forest yeah. of like you like sometimes the greatest lessons we get, some of the greatest experiences we get, some of the greatest growth we get is through those fearful things, right? Those yeah. coming out of the comfort zone. I was like, hell, it's part of why I went into improv. Why well, I think a lot of people do improv in that um, and just do things that are scary. Right. And but it is really interesting to see, like, how much of that fear actually comes true. It only comes through doing it. So you've got to like experience the fear. You've got to fight the fight to be like, oh, this fight, I wasn't as scary as I thought it was. But also just like, oh, God, there's whole other fears I didn't realize it was associated yeah. with this this um, fight. Adjacent you know? fears. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. they're, ad they're right next to you. Right. All the time. They're here. Oh, right they're <laughs> God. Get out of here. Get out of yeah. here, fears. Uh, yeah. There's so much wisdom in what you folks are saying. I'm reading the it's called How to Be Yourself by Ellen Hendrickson. I believe. Uh, and she, it's a book about anxiety and she talks about how we just, we learn through doing, you know, there's no real scenario where a person like totally, they go into their cocoon, they prepare themselves and they emerge a new person and they don't have to like go through like a painful new experience. Yeah. Almost in every scenario, you just have to go through the thing that is giving you that fear, that uncertainty. Mm. Um, and it's almost always not as bad as you thought it would be. Like going back to my experience, like moving back in with family. Yeah. I was nervous about it. I would like dread some parts of it. Um, but like now looking back on it, um, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And there was just a lot of like 
stuff that I had to work out through that experience, you know? Okay, David, I want you to give me two versions of the cocoon creature. One that was yeah. like the unexpected fear creature and then the the unfounded fear creature, you know? Like it's like okay. what comes out of that cocoon where you're like, oh, it was nothing. And then the other one that's like, oh, fuck, there was one, something much worse. Okay, cool. Yeah, feel free to do some like nature documentary um, oh, no. commentary. Oh, no, you're going to physicalize this? You're going to physicalize this? I thought... I thought that's what you I were know, I thought you were just going to give me an analogy. Like, okay, one's a troll. And the, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do nature okay, documentary. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're looking now upon the cocoon. It's emerging slowly. Oh, oh, oh there we see it, the flappers going. Is, are those flappers? Is that wings? Oh, oh, oh. It's a fully formed human head. The eyes don't completely form until about 10 minutes into birth. Oh, and th and there it is adjusting. It is now. Oh, oh. it's realizing it's being hunted. <laughs> it's got an incredibly floppy neck. That can't be good for it. <laughs> its natural defense is to fly away from everything. Okay. Yeah. That, was, yeah. that was the first one. Okay. That was unfounded fear. Unfounded fear. Okay. Okay. So it was free to, it was yeah, free to go. It was free okay. to go. Now this is unexpected fear. Okay, okay. Okay. We're returning now to the uh, birthing grounds. Oh, oh, yeah. And there's the flappers yeah. again. Some birthing is happening. Oh. oh. It's emerging its head. Oh. It looks kind of like... It's, oh! It's just, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it has gone straight to the floor. Oh. This is its defensive I... position. Wow. Usually spines emerge from the body. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope we can like integrate <laughs> some sound effects into each of those motions, you know, like a little like <laughs> yeah. bing, 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 little stingers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sound indulging. When you first yeah. get your fingers out there. That's I'm nice. I'm I'm a little disappointed you actually told us which was which because I was like I almost wanted to guess. I was like which one's unexpected <laughs> and which one is unfounded. I like how they both started out the same way. I feel yeah. like that was very like you know like sort of an intellectual choice. Really that was how, like, that was yeah. yeah. I think the artist was trying to represent yeah. that there's universality to all fear. Oh my god, it's sort mm. of like a common through line between like what both of them experience. It's like he has a string going through him. Like a yo yo. I was thinking like a tan. <laughs> David, this was your intellectual commentary. Oh. Thank you so much. Yeah, is that what we're calling it? Yeah, yeah. It, well, maybe drop the intellectual <laughs> is that part. What this is? Yeah, yeah. Like, just commentary. <laughs> just no, commentary. no intellectual. Uh, speaking of commentary, we ready for our fun of the show? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So this is the portion of the show where we have a little bit fun, a little bit comedy, a little bit improv, and being an improviser yourself, we decided upon a particular game okay. that we thought you could do quite well at, okay. which is called "Hey guys, welcome to my channel." <laughs> Okay. So it is uh, essentially a made up YouTube channel as if we're creating it and we're like presenting it to the camera. Uh, all three of us are kind of in on this and we're going to do a bit of a round robin where we throw to each other this next segment. But the segment is inspired by a randomly generated image. So, okay. David, are you going to do us give did the do the generator? Okay. So yes. this is going to be images uh, that are generated and okay. it, you have to justify it into what we're talking about. Okay. okay. Um, now, there's two things. One, we need a, a random thing. Do we want to pick up just a random word to base our channel off of? Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, either of you. Um, go I'm them. going to... Uh, first thing I see in the room. Um, pencils. <laughs> Thank you, robotic voice. Uh, so, pencils is going to be the okay. inspiration for the channel. So, it's going to be a channel about pencils. Great. Then, the second thing is, is that for our auditory listeners, every time you throw to the next person, so you're going to be like, David, please tell us uh, about how pencils were invented based off of the randomly generated image. And just describe it a little bit for our audience, just in case, okay. you know, for those who can't actually see the image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anything I'm missing in there, David? I don't think so. Uh, yeah. If you're listening on the audio, you can listen to or you can watch the video on the BitButton YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, feel free to check that out when you can. Hey, guys. Welcome to my channel. I really hope that you've been following me for a while. Subscriber base is up. We want to get a higher. So remember to like and subscribe. Click that bell. Make sure down below, up above, on the right, there's boxes. There's things to click on. What's most important? I have indigestion. You <laughs> have a digestion? Continue. Is that like a question <laughs> my that you tummy chew hurts. on? <laughs> this is reality. My tummy is hurting, but we're oh, going to keep no. doing this video. 
Okay. I think I'll be fine. You're going to be fine? <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> I feel like how you're rubbing your tummy right now, like a big teddy bear. Yeah. Uh, well, our, one of our co-hosts is having uh, uh, digestive issues, and mm-hmm. I th- I'm farting, but they can't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> There's smell vision on the internet now, David. Didn't you know that? <laughs> Oh, yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, But you know what? There's one thing that is all about digestion, and it's pencils. So we really want to kick off and tell you everything about pencil, because this channel is nothing but pencils. So, David, please tell us about the very first pencil that was ever used in human history, based off of this lovely image of a snowy scene with two women wearing muffs and hats and Santa flying through the sky. The first pencil ever used in the world was invented by Santa. Now, Santa is based on the myth of old St. Nicholas, who is Swedish. And so the Swedish needed pencils because they had a lot of ideas, a lot of crazy Swedish ideas. Uh, Next, we will hear some more context about the Swedes uh, from Olivia based on this picture of feathers that are red, yellow, purple, and blue. Olivia? Thanks, David. I'm really glad that you brought up the issue of feathers because herring are feathered fish (laughs) and herring are actually the main uh, food intake for Swedish people which isn't something that you would have thought about when, uh, you know, a Viking horde was coming at you. They would actually be covered entirely in feathers, herring feathers, and they would be smelling very fishy. Mm. And that's actually how we get the, uh, what's it called? Words? Words, yes. words. How, words. You, how you get the words, mm. something smells fishy. That actually refers to a Swedish Viking horde. Oh yeah. yeah. Um when it comes to hordes and hoarding, Robert is an expert and mm. he is gonna be taking us through the thought process behind hoarding submarines specifically. Yes. Yeah. There was a natural reaction of the Swedish people to defend against these hordes. They invented the submarine. They're oh. a very inventive people, not oh. only pencils. Submarines. So suddenly all the Swedes were getting into small, tight boats. Really? Under the water with their pencils, ready to fight the hordes. Difficult. People don't know that, like, submarines are in the shape of a pencil yes they were inspired by their own invention the pencil Mm -hmm. so if you ever notice at the end of every submarine is a lead tip so it can both shoot and write that's why at the end of every submarine there's also a rubber in case it made something wrong happen (laughs) yes if it gets a little too invasive it needs protection so the swedes were both protective and offensive (laughs) because they were attacking these hordes and Dave is going to tell you all about what came of the results of those horde fights based off this image of a plane and of a gun being shot and you can see the bullet freeze framed (laughs) why why are the suggestions so violent it started with like santa claus and now it's just become about war well i guess feathers i really don't know is it listening to us do you think the image generator is listening (laughs) i think so so the expression fill them up with lead came from the swedes they meant literally fill somebody with bullets or fill them with pencils we're learning uh or we are here to teach you today that swedes are not to be trusted swedes are a violent bloodthirsty people um who are brilliant but dangerous Uh, olivia is going to tell you very important information crucial information about how to swim away uh uh from swedes with uh this picture of a pool to save yourself from terrifying Swedish people (laughs) you need to swim to Norway Mm. and there's only one Mm. way to swim to Norway and that's through a sauna which seems counterintuitive because saunas are made out of solid wood Mm. but bear with me wood make pencil pencil good (laughs) sweets bad 
I guess this has turned into like our, I, I don't know how we spiraled like this. <laughs> well, let me wrap it up for you with this next image. We're really gonna find a middle ground. <laughs> What? Olivia, what is that? please tell me what I'm looking at. That's a you're looking at a boat in distress <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. It's stormy. The image sky. generator so dark. <laughs> <laughs> the the tags are boat distress sea. The point is that we're learning on this channel about pencils, <laughs> and that despite the level of stress you have. Despite who you're fighting yep. or how dark or horrible you may seem on the outside, we're all tormented inside. And the pencil is our means to get that out onto the page and let the world know who we really are. That is why the Swedes invented poetry. <laughs> they are the creators of violence <laughs> and of art. <laughs> they are one of the most polarizing cultures in all of history. <laughs> Thank you for watching historically inaccurate YouTube channel about pencils in Sweden. Signing off is David Forschenheimer, Olivia, and Robert Beowulf. Beowulf. Bye. Shave yourself. <laughs> like pencil there, shaving. Oh, there pencil shaving. There you go. That's a, what we call it in comedy. We call that a bring back. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. You, you bring it back. Bring it back. Ooh, oh, my, my face hurts. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That, that <laughs> image that was an experience. <laughs> the image generator just did not want to help us out. It was like, we're going to get darker oh, with every God. picture. I mean, I feel like I need to call Samaritans after I know. It's like, I am so sorry. <laughs> oh. So yeah, many apologies. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, disclaimer, none of that is true, and I don't know any <laughs> Swedish people. I apologize to I just know, I just know the, the Muppet, the Swedish chef. That's not an accurate board, representation. Board, board. <laughs> that is not an accurate representation, no. though. No. Although, I wonder whether or not he's celebrated out there. Like, if they have, like, puppets of him and, like, merchandise, or if it's just, like, they don't even care. Do they even know he exists? I don't know. Does he exist? I mean, he... Art is subjective, but it's also subject matter driven. Does he exist? <gasps> Are you a brain in a jar? Is oh. any of this real? This is going back to your Matrix days. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> if the puppet is alone in a room, does it exist? That is the question. Is that like the forest? The tree falling in the woods and no one's around to hear it? It goes like yeah. <laughs> if the Swedish chef borts alone, does, <laughs> does he, he really bort bort? at all? <laughs> <laughs> what is a bort if not heard by another? A bort by any other name. It's a borted. <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> oh, oh, well, that brings us to the end of today's show. And I want to thank the lovely Olivia for oh. joining us. Olivia, do you have any takeaways from this show, insights, things you've learned? Uh, I didn't know how much hatred both all or all of us had for Scandinavia, I guess. Oh, no! Um, you can, please feel free to cut that. But, yeah, I think it's really cool that we all know how to, like, take our emotions and just, like, throw them out into word balls at, at walls and, like, see what sticks. Mm. Obviously, I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> this is a this is a piss poor example of what I thought we were doing really well before. <laughs> so I guess my real takeaway is maybe I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think it ultimately demonstrates that we are both insightful and flawed. Oh, oh, Olivia was either inspired or having a small stroke. I don't know what it was. <laughs> 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 I'm smelling burnt. <laughs> yeah, right. Does anybody else smell that? <laughs> David, any insights for you from this show today? Mm. <laughs> I just have to apologize again to all the Swedish people in the world, <laughs> yeah. all the Swedish fans of this podcast. <laughs> this uh, the next episode will be very pro Sweden, um, specifically, and yeah, <laughs> very be sponsored uh, by Aquavit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, pro Sweden and anti lies. Mm. Thank you. 
Well, I'll have nothing but IKEA furniture decorating everything. Yeah, um, that's pretty true. But, right? Yeah. You, have, you have a bunch of IKEA furniture. There you go. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Um, my takeaways would be is that like <sighs> there's this big prevalent theme of fear around the new, be it a new beginning, a new thing you're trying out, and we we just we have to force ourselves into those scenarios every now and then it's not something you do all the time like fear is a good like it's a it keeps us alive right it's part of like our survival tool belt but sometimes overcoming that just deliver us some of the greatest lessons we've had in life and unfortunately sometimes they're really really sad getting through them but sometimes they end up being like way more positive than we thought they ever would be right mm. so mm. i think that 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 facing that fear is a big, big lesson. Old man oh. yells at cloud. <laughs> Old man yells at cloud. Face your fears, <laughs> right? <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you, old men that joined me today for this discussion. <laughs> he meant to say Olivia, but he said old men. No, because we're all playing the role here. Yeah, surprisingly, sure, not the sure, first sure. time that's happened, David. Uh, <laughs> Where she's been old, Olivia. I've been mistaken for an old man quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, the thank you so much. Olivia, for joining us, for all of the old men out there and women and, and non-gendered individuals. Uh, thank you for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow David Borja at uh, Twitter and Instagram using the good old at bit button. Or you can follow myself, Robert F. Mackay, at exactly that on Instagram, at Robert F. Mackay. Uh, make sure to follow and subscribe to BitButton and turn on them notifications. Get subscribed so you get all the updates, all the latest issues of Tissues of the Day. And remember, internet, stay wet. Oh. And courageous. <laughs> is, is that your tagline? Yeah, it is. Stay wet? Stay wet. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. For anyone listening this long, I want to briefly say, like, so I initially came up with the concept tissues of the day as being a show about emotions and sexuality. We're working on a theme song. Um, yeah. But so emotions, if we're crying, we're wet. Uh -huh. uh, and sometimes when we're getting sexual, we are also wet. That's what <laughs> Stay Wet Internet is about. Right? <laughs> it's a double entendre. A devil in tenuandro. It's, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what we're ending on. Wow. <laughs> New word for you out there, Internet. <laughs> Enjoy it. Uh, thanks for having me. I really, I really enjoy talking to you guys.